Hi, this is Sean, and this is Walking in Wisdom. Today is October the 26th, so I shall be reading from Philippians, the second chapter. And today I'm reading from the NLT, which is the, no, I'm reading from the TPT, which is the Passion Translation. So in this chapter, there's four key topics. The first one is join together in perfect unity. The next one is example of Jesus Christ. The third one is believers shine like lights in the world. And the last section is called examples of Timothy. So let's go over this. Look at how much encouragement you found in your relationship with the anointed one. You are filled with overflowing you are filled to overflowing with comforting love. You have experienced a deepening friendship with the Holy Spirit and have felt his tender affection and mercy. So I'm asking you, my friends, that you be joined together in perfect unity with one heart, one passion, and united in one love walk together with one harmonious purpose and you will fill my heart with unbounded joy. Be free from pride filled opinions for they will only harm and cherish unity. Don't allow self-promotion to hide in your hearts but be authentic. Humility put others first and view others as more important than yourself. Abandon every display of foolishness. Possess a greater concern for what matters to others instead of your own interest. And consider the example that Jesus, the Anointed One, has set before us. Let his mindset become your motivation. So here, Paul is talking about walking in unity. He wants to put aside anything that disrupts the unity because when you are, or when we come together in unity, there is power in unity. And that can be found actually, um, was it Genesis 11 when they were building the Tower of Babel? And he tells them, he says, let us go down there and disrupt and confound their language because look at them. Anything that they imagine, anything they put their minds to, anything that they come together in unity, it will um, be accomplished. So this is what Paul is saying here. Hey, listen, when you are in unity, things will happen. And in that unity, there has to be love. Amen. So then this section, and that's joined together in perfect uni unity. Now this section is called the example of Jesus Christ. He existed in the form of God, yet he gave no thought to seizing equality with God as his supreme prize. Instead, he emptied himself of an out word glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. He became human. He humbled himself and became vulnerable, choosing to be uh, revealed as a man and was obedient. He was a perfect example even in his death, a criminal's death by crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God exalted him and multiplied his greatness. He has now been given the greatest of all names. The authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. Everything and everyone will one day submit to his name in the heavenly realm. In this, he in this earthly realm and in the demonic realm, and every tongue will proclaim in every language, Jesus Christ is Lord Yahweh, bringing glory and honor to God, his Father. Amen. So he sets Jesus as an example. And we got to remember that Paul is in prison. He is bound. He is chained. He has shackles. And he's writing this. He's encouraging us saying, hey, listen, Christ is our example. He left his deity and became human so that we 
could um, one day be brought together and become sons and daughters of the Most High. And he was saying, Jesus, because of his obedience, God has exalted him and given him a name above any other name. And at that name, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess in heaven, above heavens, above the earth, below the earth. Hallelujah. It says every tongue will proclaim in every language, Jesus Christ is Lord Yahweh, bringing glory and honor to God. Amen. So even as um, Paul is bound, like I said, he's still encouraging us. He's still telling us um, what Jesus has done for us. And we need to always be mindful of that no matter what we're going through, Jesus is the prize. So this next section says, believers shine like lights in the world. That's us, y'all. Believers shine. We need to be shining brightly for Jesus. My beloved ones, just like you've always listened to everything I've taught you in the past, I'm asking you now to keep following my instructions as though I were right there with you. Now, you must continue to make this new life fully manifested as you live in the holy awe of God, which brings you trembling into his presence. God will continually revitalize you implanting within you the passion to do what pleases him. Live a cheerful life without complaining or division among yourselves, for then you will be seen as innocent, faultless, and pure children of God. Even though you live in the midst of a brutal and perverse culture, for you will appear among them as Oh, excuse me, as shining lights in the universe, holding out the words of eternal life. I haven't labored among you for nothing, for your lives are the fruit of my ministry and will bring and will be my glorious boast at the unveiling of Christ but I will rejoice even if my life is poured out like a liquid offering to God over your sacrificial and surrendered lives of faith. So no matter what happens to me, you should rejoice in ecstatic celebration with me. Amen. Now remember, Paul is in jail, and I know I keep saying this, but I want to emphasize his condition because sometimes we look at our situation and we can't see anything else. Um, and when, we, when we're in that state, we're no good to anyone else. But he also goes on to say, listen, you are my fruit. Because you got to remember that he only met them once. And that was back in the book of Acts chapter 16. And he stayed approximately about a month. And he, it says, you partnered with me. So within that time, he's been in communication with them, but he's writing them now to encourage them. Even though he's only been in, uh, uh, seeing them once. Amen. So this next section says, and this is the last section for this chapter, it says, example of Timothy. Now remember, Timothy is visiting him in uh, prison. Uh, he's in the maritime prison in Rome. But Timothy was also with him when he went to um, Philippi. So it says, Yet I'm trusting in our Lord Jesus that I may send Timothy to you soon, so you can be refreshed when I find out how you're doing. Timothy is like no other. He carries the same passion for your welfare that I carry in my heart. For it seems as though everyone else is busy seeking what is best for themselves instead of the things that are most important to our Lord Jesus Christ. You already know about his excellent reputation since he has served alongside me as a loyal son in the work of ministry. After I see what transpires with me, he's the one I will send to you to bless you. And I'm trusting in my Lord to return to you in due time. But for now, I feel a stirring in my heart to send Epaphroditus back to you immediately. 
He's a friend to me and a wonderful brother with me, excuse me, and a wonderful brother and fellow soldier who has worked with me as we served as ministers of the gospel. And you sent him as your apostle to minister to me in my need. But now he is grieved to know that you found out he had been sick. So he longs to return and comfort you in this. It's true, he almost died, but God showed him mercy and healed him. And I'm so thankful to God for his healing. As I was spared from having the sorrow of losing him on top of all my other troubles. So you can see why I'm delighted to send him to you now. I know that you're anxious to see him and rejoice in his healing. And it encourages me to know how happy you have, uh, you'll have be to have him back. So warmly welcome him home in the Lord with joyous love and esteem him highly for people like him deserve it. Because of me, he put his life on the line, despising the danger so that he could provide for me with what you couldn't. Since you were so far away, he did it all because of his ministry for Christ. Amen. So he gives the, not only the example of Timothy, but he also gives the example of Epaphroditus. And he was saying, hey, listen, Epaphroditus is a fellow worker. He's a soldier. We've been out there laboring for the Lord. He's a good brother. He's a good man. And you know what? I'm going to send him back to you immediately. I'm going to send Timothy, but you know, I got to find out what's going on with me here. Once I find out what's going on with me here, I'll send Timothy. But for now, you get Epaphroditus and he goes on to tell all of his wonderful features. But he also said, listen, Epaphroditus was sick and he heard that you found out that he was sick and God healed him. But you know what? He healed me too because that would have been just tore me up. I'm going through something and then lose my brother. That, you know, so God not only healed him and spared him, but he healed, he spared me as well. And I'm so thankful. So he's going to come back to uh, Philippi so you can see him and see how God healed him. And, you know, he can see the testimony, the live and walk and testimony. So warmly welcome him home in the Lord. And he was saying, you know, he, one of the reasons he got sick is because he was laboring so hard. We know that you guys wanted to bless me and do some things, but you couldn't. So he had to go out and do some things. He did it all for um, his ministry for Christ. Amen. So that concludes chapter two of Philipp, uh, Philippians. Be encouraged, guys, no matter what you're going through. Nothing's too hard and nothing's too impossible for our Lord Jesus. Remember, the book of um, Philippians is the book of joy. And joy is a supernatural fruit of the Spirit that will enable you to do what you need to do. So no matter what you're going through, God will enable you. He will encourage you. But you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. You have to get with Him. Sing songs and um, spiritual songs and hymns. Hallelujah. Read His Word. Talk to Him so He can talk back to you. His Word says you get nigh to me. You get closer to me and I'll get close to you. Whatever you're going through, God is right there in the midst. Amen. Know that I'm praying you guys through. It doesn't matter what you're going through. We're going through. Hallelujah. We're going to get to the other side. Amen. So God loves you very much. You're so very precious and special to him. Jesus loves you. Oh, he paid the ultimate price. He bled and died so that we can have eternal life. Holy Spirit is on the ground. He's making his rounds. He's doing it. But we need to yield and submit to him. Praise God. I love you guys as well. It's going to be okay. God bless your hearts. Amen. <laughs>